So I will talk about uh, a test case for MPI and singularity. And here there is a brief introduction, right, of the main components that are needed in a MPI based application. So we need the executable MPI program. That's, that's what you will provide, right? Also the MPI library and the runner, the MPI runtime, which could be, for instance, MPI run and some communication mechanism, for instance, uh, SSH. So uh, here it says that there are two uh, approaches, right? To run an MPI application uh, with, with the containers. And according to the, uh, the documentation of uh, singularity and the uh, uh, obtainer, uh, there is uh, one, one more uh, uh, way to, to run it, right? So uh, basically in the first uh, way to, to run an MPI application, we need an MPI library in the container and also an MPI library in the host. And the, the versions of these libraries should match. In the second way, and I am most, uh, most likely, uh, I think uh, Pavlin came up with this solution, right? And, and this is by uh, running the, the MPI uh, library from within your container, right? So in this case, uh, you don't need a MPI installation on the host, just on the container. At, uh, in the HackMD, I wrote the documentation pages for MPI and, uh, and Singularity and Obtainer. Uh, they are very similar. This is Obtainer and this is a Singularity. And here you can see that they call the host-based uh, a manner, they call it a hybrid model. Let me see, where is it? The hybrid model, right? This is basically what we are calling the host based application. And they also propose one extra. form to, to run MPI applications, and they call it the bind model, right? And here it, it's interesting that uh, basically uh, you provide only the MPI implementation on the host, right? And as the name suggests, uh, you bind this implementation uh, into uh, the container. So the container doesn't need uh, to have this installation. So, but uh, we want to look at this uh, binding model. If you have further questions, you can uh, uh, ask us, right? So for the first uh, manner, to run the MPI application. So we can run it with the MPI run and then singularity and run and the image name. 
Yes, and, and these are the options that you need to run the program, right? The executable and the, all the, the flags that are needed for the executable. And it's uh, important that here you provide the absolute path to the executable as it is provided in the container. So here there are uh, uh, several details of, of what you will see, uh, depending on how you install the MPI uh, libraries. You can see some uh, messages about the uh, ORTE, yeah, right? And uh, how the, the communication is managed, right? The type of uh, uh, protocols that are used in the MPI library to communicate the messages like uh, MCA. And in some cases, uh, you would need to uh, deactivate uh, some types of uh, communication protocols. For instance, uh, the MCA Vader. Uh, I would say this is this is the recommended way to run in HPC, and it's a, a relatively easy, right? The only thing that you need to uh, consider is that uh, the, the implementation of the MPI that you install in your container it should match the one that is present in the in the host. Uh, for instance, uh, I will mention uh, later on one example that we run on, on Kevin McKayse, and you will see how the versions are matched. And otherwise, if the program runs, but the versions are not the same, then uh, the behavior is unpredictable. So in the second way uh, to run the MPI applications, uh, uh, here, uh, this is possible, right? And as Pavlin uh, mentioned uh, uh, before, if you run your application using this scheme, then running in one node is a, a straightforward, but if you try to run on multiple nodes, then uh, problems are expected to appear, right? And uh, they can be uh, not uh, very easily uh, deployed. Okay. So uh, here, the MPI launcher is called from the container. Right, so in principle, you don't need the installation on the host. And, and basically you run it as, an, as a singularity image as uh, commonly uh, we are doing uh, today. So it works on a single node. And uh, when you try to run on multiple node, nodes, uh, you will see uh, some messages from the or, or the demons, and uh, most likely the program will crash, right? So here is where uh, you will need to uh, take a look at uh, at the at the example at the scripts and see uh, uh, how uh, one can uh, deal with the uh, different errors that are appearing. So I would say this case here, image-based uh, runtime, is not that straightforward as the previous one. Yeah. So uh, here, uh, Pavlin uh, wrote an example for uh, Gromax. Gromax is, is uh, precisely the application that is not recommended to be containerized because it is well optimized to be compiled on the host, right? And it's very efficient in a in compiled way, but just for illustrating this uh, MPI application, 
So here we provide you with an example on how to compile it. And running on a single node is a straightforward. So you can do it uh, interactively here or on or just uh, write it on the on a script, a batch script, for instance, by using the singularity and the name of the image. If you do the host-based MPI uh, scheme, then uh, you can use the MPI uh, runtime from the host, yes, and requesting the number of ranks that you need. And then you invoke uh, singularity and execute uh, uh, the image with the name of the executable, as I mentioned before, in, a, in an absolute path. And these are some extra options that are, that are needed for running Gromax. So wait a minute, my browser stopped working. Good. And here, if you relied on the run script, yes, from the image, then you can use the MPI run and just uh, put the name of the uh, singularity image here, right? And these are the options that are needed for, for Gromax. So, okay, good up to now, uh, we do with these two schemes, right? But remember that uh, here we are requesting just a single node, but the problems start when you try to run on uh, uh, different nodes. And uh, here, are the guidelines that uh, uh, Pavlin wrote for uh, uh, Gromax uh, uh, for multi-node uh, simulations. And you can see how one can, uh, well, uh, solve one issue and then some other issues could appear, right? until uh, the job uh, compiles. So there are uh, several uh, issues regarding, for instance, how MPI communicates the, the messages, as I mentioned before, and also the ORTE demos. And here is a recipe that uh, Gromax what well, Gromax is used for, for installing the entire script, the complete definition file, right? So, well, uh, this was an example for uh, Gromax and MPI. And uh, here is one example that I tried, right? Uh, on the machine uh, Kebnekaise. Uh, this is the definition file, right? And here are the instructions that I follow. So uh, first of all, uh, I can explain what is the OSU benchmark. This is a, a well-known uh, set of benchmark for MPI a code uh, for MPI a codes, right? And uh, they are useful when, when one is testing a new architecture, for instance. So they can be downloaded from the internet. And uh, in my case, I placed the, uh, the target, the tar, the tar files, uh, in this folder here, right? And then a singularity will place 
this uh, file at the root level. And uh, I also uh, downloaded the open MPI uh, from the internet and placed that in the same folder. And notice here that uh, one needs to keep uh, track of this number here. This is the version of open MPI, right? So uh, here uh, we specify the path where uh, the, the binaries and, and, and the examples for uh, this also benchmark will be placed, right? And this is the recipe for building uh, the application. So here I'm using the the flag that uh, Pablo mentioned before, right? For avoiding the interactive uh, uh, questioning during the installation process. And here, for instance, uh, I'm starting with the installation of OpenMPI, right? And I'm changing the path uh, uh, variable and the library path to include open MPI into uh, the path in the container, right? And finally, uh, here, I started with the installation of the micro benchmark, right? So, how do how do you build this image? We have seen that uh, previously. We just do the uh, singularity build, and I did this uh, on my local machine, and then the container uh, is transferred uh, uh, to Kevnekaiser. So if you remember, uh, during the installation, I use OpenMPI uh, 4.0.3. And this was in purpose because on Kevnekaise, we have a similar version or the same version of OpenMPI, right? So this is the one that I used together with the uh, Singularity module. So uh, here are the lines that I use. Uh, for comparison, I also compile uh, the benchmark on Kebnekaise, right? And uh, this is the way that I use to run uh, the singularity container. So here you can see uh, some uh, benchmarks, right? And this is uh, an example for a latency uh, case. Latency means that the time that it takes uh, within uh, sending the message and, and receiving the message, right? And uh, here the message varies uh, in size, right? measured in mega in, in bytes and this is the time that it takes for the message to be uh, transferred so uh, there was a recommendation uh, first of all to use uh, the singularity infinity band but if you try you try this option you will see some uh, performance issues as you can see here the time stay takes a, a very long. Yeah? And the, we can change this setting, right? And avoid the uh, infinity band options. And in that case, you, the performance is improved. And uh, for comparison, I'm also plotting uh, the compiled version on Kevnekaise. And you can see that for this simple case of uh, sending and receiving messages, uh, there is a, a, an overhead for a message transfer, right? And it is 
not that uh, big. And uh, remember that this is just one example or simple example of sending messages. But in real applications uh, such as a, a, a TensorFlow or PyTorch or any other uh, application that uh, makes use of MPI, they are not just sending and receiving messages, they are doing the, also the so-called all-to-all operations where uh, many uh, processors communicate at the same time. And this overhead could be uh, magnified, I would say. So but for this present case, you see that up to uh, two to the six uh, bytes or two megabytes, uh, I would say, two megabytes, uh, the overhead is uh, relatively small, but it increases as you increase the size of the message. So already for uh, four megabytes, you are, uh, I'm observing here a 10% uh, overhead when you move from the MPI compile to the singularity uh, um, case. So uh, this is the second case that I mentioned, and uh, this is for an all-to-all -all, uh, communication. Uh, this is a, a, an operation that we see, for instance, where we are computing the fast Fourier transform and other types of algorithms. And again, uh, uh, as a reference, I computed it with the, uh, the MPI post-compile application. And this is in the uh, black line here. So as expected, it has the lowest uh, time. Yeah. And then uh, I did the, the singularity case, right? And uh, this is the red line uh, shown here. So you see that there is an overhead. And in the case of all-to-all -all communications, as, you, as, as I mentioned before, when many processors are trying to communicate at the, at the same time, so the overhead was around 24% uh, for uh, this uh, message here, message size here, one megabyte. So, and also uh, here I did the, the simulation with obtainer and you can see that the overhead is in between the singularity and the MPI host compile uh, the code. So, and I would say, according to this plot and to uh, the different runs that I did. Uh, this is uh, not, is not uh, within the statistical error. So I would say that it, it contains some uh, useful information. So yes, uh, is there any questions about this example? There was probably a request for some clarification about the infinite bounds. It's in the chat. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is the type of uh, protocol that is used for uh, transferring the messages. And some HPC uh, centers uh, support uh, this type of, of communication. For instance, uh, in the original example that I took from uh, the carpentries, uh, the machine where uh, they were running, the example uh, was Archer, I rem as far as I remember, and they had uh, some uh, flags for the installation of the MPI library, but these are not uh, supported in in the SNCC uh, clusters, or at least, well, I would say in, in concrete case. 
So, uh, but this is important uh, because uh, for this uh, case, I had already uh, a baseline, right? Uh, because here I could compile the application uh, on the host, right? And then I had a reference uh, value for what I, I should expect. So what imagine that uh, you cannot compile the code and you, you have only uh, the container or, or the recipe, then maybe if you get this, this one first, then you will observe uh, some, some, some behavior like this and you would be happy with that. But uh, in principle, it could be improved in performance, right? But uh, here the example was okay because they had the reference uh, point. Uh, 